We're up here in northern Minnesota on the chase for crappie. You know, Minnesota is known for its panfish lakes. Some of them are harder to get to than others, but rest assured, wherever you go in northern Minnesota, if you do a little research, you can catch quality crappie and bluegill. What we've done is we've basically drilled about 60 holes, 70 holes around this area, and you just go hole to hole until you mark fish. Don't bother fishing unless you mark fish. That's the biggest thing with pan fishing. A lot of guys will try to camp on a hole and grind it out. Fish have fins, they swim. You have legs and a fish finder. All you have to do is drill, put your mark them in the hole, and see whether or not you got fish. If you don't, keep moving. Come on. There we go. Oh, I just love fishing crappie with light tackle. Oh, look at that one. That's a nice fish there. On the larva jig with a little bit of larva on it. I've got VMC uh, waxtail jig on here that I pinched off the end of, and then I have the VMC chandelier spoon. So when I, get a, when I have one fish, I'll go after them really, really light with a small jig, a little bit of larva on it. But if I start Christmas treeing, if I get one fish and there's two, three, four, five down there, I'm gonna take that chandelier spoon and that will get down there really, really quick. So it'll increase your odds of pulling as many fish out as possible once you start marking a ton of fish. Oh, there we go. It's been one of those days where you, if you get two on the screen, they start competing and then you get them to bite. Now there's still one down there. So I'm gonna get down as fast, fast as possible. And the kind of the rule of thumb with crappie fishing is you want to fish as fast and as heavy as the fish will let you fish because it's all about keeping their attention span keeping those active fish below you they just fed and usually the small ones bite first and then the big ones and sometimes the big ones aren't the first ones to race up so sometimes the key is to get below the first mark to the bigger fish Ooh, chase 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 there we go. Gosh, I just love crappie fishing. You know, there's something, something to be said about fishing. Deeper water, smaller tungsten jigs, and pulling these guys up through the holes. I mean, just gorgeous fish. And they're eager to bite. And, you know, we're not keeping fish today, but if you wanted to keep a few of these, they're delicious as well. Man, I had two of them just follow my lure right up. And it's just cat and mouse today. Once you get them to chase, they're usually committed, but sometimes you gotta sit and play with them like I'm doing right now. I'm actually getting, I drop below that top fish to that second fish to see if I can't get him more committed. Oh man, he short bit me. He short bit me, but I'm gonna see if I can get him back. There we go, yep, got him back. A lot of times you just drop right back down to them and you can get them to go. Sometimes you just scare them and you're never gonna get them back. But a lot of times just putting it right back in their face works real, real well. Finally, I really had to work, really had to work that guy there. Ooh, and a bluegill. You know, this, this shows you lakes in Minnesota just because that fish was literally eight feet off the bottom. And I could have swore that's your typical crappie pattern but the bluegills are obviously feeding on the same thing the crappies are, so they're gonna suspend as well. Just dropped my lure into that school of fish again. We'll see if we can't get one to pluck out of, oh, and he got off. Oh, it's the worst feeling. You get your lure down there, you try to keep the momentum going with these fish, and you hook one, and it comes unbuttoned. You know, crappies, for those of you that never fished crappies before, they do have a, a real papery mouth, so, there's kind of a, you want to give it a pause in between to make sure they get it in there, but you also want to be gingerly with reeling them up and, and kind of setting the hook. You want just enough pressure to, to pop the hook in, but not enough to rip it out. Ooh, bluegill. I'm in 33 feet of water, and these bluegills are coming in at 28, 26 feet. A lot of times you get crappies and bluegills co-mingling on the bottom, but very rarely do you see them suspended you know, six, eight feet off the bottom, just swimming around the base. And, that, and it, that just tells me they're feeding together, they're feeding on the same thing, and it makes for an awesome day bite. Oh, there's another nice one. That one actually bit it right as it was going through the school. So again, 
just keep on getting that lure down there as fast as possible. And then when you quit marking fish, don't think the crappies are gonna come back. They, get, they usually don't. After you pulled five, six fish out of a hole, they usually leave. And that means you pick up your flasher and you start bopping around until you find another school and you just do the same thing over and over again. Oh man, that one feels a little bit better. What do we have here? Oh wow, look at that guy. Wow, I just love fishing northern Minnesota crappies. You know, tungsten jig, little larva for tippage, and this is the result. Hey guys, stay tuned. We got more Midwest Outdoors coming up.